brief introduction about Sensei Brooklyn, a little bit about him, uh, so you guys understand who you're speaking with. This is a great uh, person, uh, a great friend, a great martial artist, and I just want to go through his bio real quick before we get started. Okay, so first, a little bit about Sensei Brooklyn. Sensei Brooklyn got his first black belt at age nine. He's also a 4-3 black belt in Taekwondo, a 4-3 black belt in Sung Hang, Sang, Sun Hang Bo, a second degree black belt in Hapkido. All right, and actually, big big news going on right now. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, Sensei Brooklyn will be going for his second degree black belt in SKF, which is under Master Free Dordar, our CEO. So that is tomorrow night. It's a huge event. I've been to their belt graduations, and I'm sure if you tune in and go to the Facebook page, uh, you'll see some amazing videos of Sensei Brooklyn. Uh, he's choreographing an amazing kata, and what they have to go through to get their black belts is like nothing else I've ever seen in, from any other association. Uh, big day also for Met, our CEO, Master Free Dordar, and the Champions Academy. It is our 20th year anniversary, and Sensei Brooklyn is uh, one of four that has trained for the full 20 years under Master Free Dordar. Okay, so besides his martial arts training, uh, Sensei Brooklyn was the program director slash general manager of the Champions Academy. The Champions Academy in British, uh, British Columbia, Vancouver, is also a million-dollar school. It grosses over one million dollars per year. So uh, all these techniques and all this information that Sensei Brooklyn will be passing on today when, uh, was from when 2006 to 2010 when he was the program director slash general manager. Also, one final note before we pass it on to Sensei Brooklyn. Sensei Brooklyn ran two schools. He was the owner of two schools okay, before the age of 20. Okay, so Sensei Brooklyn, I think everyone's pumped up and excited to hear from you, so I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. All right, let's do this. All right, Sensei Nick, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And welcome, everybody, to the Program Director Training Part 1. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Vancouver, Canada, and um, if you walked into the boardroom right now where I was sitting, you guys would have a little chuckle because as I'm sitting here preparing to do this uh, very fun webinar with you guys. I actually have ice packs on like six different parts of my body. So, you know, uh, Sensei Nick was right. Tomorrow is our 20th year anniversary at the school. Um, it's phenomenal. So if you guys have an opportunity, go on to Facebook, go on to the Champions Way Lounge, and just give a big quick shout out and congratulations to the CEO of Champions Way, Master Fareed Dordar, because 20 years and being in business and, and grossing over a million dollars is a phenomenal um, you know, a, a phenomenal thing to do. You know, lots of martial arts schools that we see all the time are closing down and and just not making it, and you know, struggling in this economy. And so, you know, the fact that uh, we can take a school and 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 really strive in this economy. And and I always tell people the same thing, which is, you know, we are in a recession-proof business. Everybody always needs confidence. Everybody always needs to be in shape, and everybody always wants to feel good. So, you know, tomorrow's the 20-year anniversary. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to getting in there. Actually, one quick thing on that. There's only four of us that are actively training after 20 years still, and all four of us are testing tomorrow. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited, and I'm super excited to do this webinar with you guys today. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right into it and go on to it. Now, with the program director training, we're going to go over some, some different things here on how to sell like a million-dollar school. So like Sensei Nick said, you know, while I was at the Champions Martial Arts Academy, we did gross over $1 million a year, and we're continuously growing, grossing over $1 million every single year. Um, it's a very powerful business, and there's many things that we're doing that is making that possible on a daily basis. Now, while we do this webinar, I encourage you guys to tweet. Go to Twitter and log in and tweet, hashtag PDRise. That's going to be the handle for today's webinar. Anytime you guys want to have a question or a comment, um, you, you want to give your thoughts on anything, please just tweet that. And at the end of the webinar, we're going to go over all the different tweets and answer all the questions and uh, address the comments and so on and so forth. And at the end of this webinar, stay tuned because we will be giving away one free ticket to the Toronto uh, Training Day. That's at the end of this month, May 26th. Myself will be there. Uh, Sir Sean, one of my partners here at the school, a uh, phenomenal sales guy, phenomenal martial artist. He'll actually be testing for first degree tomorrow as well. And Sensei Nick will be there, and the Kersies will be there as well. So it's going to be a phenomenal event. If you guys can make it, definitely come on down, and we'll have a good time. 
Now, the first thing I want to go over is just the three simple guidelines to accomplishment. You know, everybody has their own tricks, and everybody has their own sayings, and their, their own things that they want to do to be able to accomplish the goals that they set out for themselves. And what I've done is I've broken it down into three for the, for the case of this webinar. Now, there's so many things that we could be talking about. And as a program director, there's a Schindler's list of things that we should be doing on a daily basis. However, for the sake of actually following through with things, I'm really only going to give you guys three things to do today. Take three takeaways. Take them home. And these are three things that you can implement into your school today and get results immediately. Number one is theory. Number two is execution. And number three is measurement. Now, this is not new stuff. These are not things that I created. It's just things that I perfected. And that's why our school is doing so well. Number one, theory. Knowing when the sale begins. Now, this is such a very valuable part of the sales process because if you don't know when the sale begins, you'll miss the sale entirely. Phone etiquette, your first impression, the intro, and the follow-up. A sale is being made in every single one of these areas in running your martial arts business. And it's important that you really pay attention to each one of these and perfect each one of these, whether it's yourself or whether you have staff members that are handling the phone etiquette, the first impression, the intro or the class, and the follow-up. Get everyone on the same page. Starting with phone etiquette, number one thing, be friendly and cheery. You would be surprised at how many school owners I call on a daily basis to talk about business solutions. And the way they answer the phone baffles me. I even ask them sometimes, is this how you answer the phone all the time? Because if I was a lead or a prospect calling in, I'd be turned off immediately. Be friendly and be cheery. Don't be like this guy on the phone. Smile. What I did at the school all the time, and I even do this here at the office, is I have a mirror in front of me. And I know it sounds cheesy, but every single time I pick up the phone to make a call, I look in the mirror and I smile because that radiates through the phone. And people can feel that energy over the phone, whether they're here in your local community or whether they're on the other side of the world. It doesn't matter. Energy is infectious, and it radiates through the phone. Get the right info, but don't give too much info when you're on the phone. And what I always tell my sales guys is avoid the price question three times. Now. With that, you don't have to flat out tell them you're not going to give them the price, but try and find different ways that you can avoid that price question and move on to something else. Now, if they've asked you three times in a row, flat out, what is your price, give them the price. Don't want to make it seem like you're some kind of secret society or anything, and you really don't want to make it seem like you're an infomercial telemarketer. So just try and avoid it three times, and at the end of that, if they're still persisting, try and you know, give them the price. Now, one thing that I actually told one of our program directors at the school just recently, and I talked to him yesterday, and he actually told me, he said, you know what, Sensor Brooklyn, there's one thing that you told me just recently that I've been implementing into my sales process, and it really worked 100% of the time since the time I've started using it. And that is, you'll be light, be casual. When someone asks me the price, sometimes I'll just flat out say, oh, you know, about $1,000 a month. But if you sign up today, it can get you a free T-shirt, you know, something fun. And what it does is it brings down their guard. And it, it, you know, it, it, it just makes them feel a little bit more comfortable with you because they know it's not $1,000. But the free T-shirt's nice. And you know what? Nine times out of ten, they don't even come back to the price. And if you're smart enough and slick enough to move on to the next topic of conversation, you can totally avoid that price uh, question and that rebuttal right then and there and move on to something else. When you're booking lessons or you're trying to get them to come down to the school or you're trying to get them to come down and try in class, always give two options when booking that. Options are necessary when trying to get someone to commit. And don't just say, when can you come down? Because then that opens up an opportunity for them to say, well, I can't. So give them two options. Hey, you know what, I have a time slot on Tuesday at 5.30, and I have another time slot on Thursday at 4.30. Which one works best for you? 
give them the option and make them choose one. Now, if none of those work, just say, hey, let me go back to my schedule here and see what else I can work out. Is morning usually better for you or afternoon or evening? Is daytime or weekend? You know, which one's better for you? Always try and give them an option where they have to choose one, but they cannot say yes or no. The first impression in anything is, is so important. I mean, if you have broccoli in your teeth, if you have bad breath, you know, you haven't shaved in three weeks and you look like Grizzly Adams, all these things are first impressions. If your uniform is wrinkly, if it's dirty, if your belt's not tied on properly, if they walk in and you're wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt and a fanny pack, probably not going to give a very good first impression. All right? So number one thing that I always tell our staff is stand up when they walk into school and greet them with a smile. You know, be energetic. Again, energy is infectious. And if you have a counter at the front desk there that you sit, beside, sit behind and you, you, you do all your work at the computer there, when, you, when someone walks in and you stand up to greet them, come out from behind that counter. Get that barrier out of the way. Make it opening. Come out and shake their hand. Welcome them. You know, show them around the school. Give them a tour of what you have built with your hard work, your sweat, and your tears over these years. And do all this before you get them to fill out the waiver. If you can make them feel comfortable within your school, you'll have so much more success in the sales process. So what you want to do is, again, be energetic. Get out from behind any kind of barrier you have. Don't hide behind a pro shop t-shirt rack. You know, get out in front because body language speaks a million words more. Now I want to spend a little bit of time on the waiver form because a lot of you guys out there and a lot of the people that I speak to, and when I first started doing stuff with martial arts schools, I didn't understand the power of the waiver form. Simply put, if you don't use a waiver, you are missing key components in the sales process. If you fill out the waiver properly, if you have the proper waiver for people to actually complete when they come into your studio, that it should handle most of the objections before they even come up inside your school. And what we have is I have a waiver form that has seven magic questions on it. Now all this stuff here is in the program director kit. So if you have that, you can always go back to the program director kit and download all this information. If you don't, at the end of this webinar, I will have all my information, or you can simply tweet, hashtag PDRise, and ask for the link to the program director kit, and then all this information will be available to you. But there are seven magic questions, so let's go over that really quickly. Number one, the address. A lot of people don't understand what the power of an address does for you. Well, simply put, this allows you to know are they going to even be able to complete a program within your school? Okay, now let's think about that for a second. You're sitting down with someone for the very first time. You ask them, hey, where about, where about you live? Oh, you live here. Awesome. Now, about, how far is that from the studio? Okay, so that's telling us how long it's going to take them to get to the studio. Is there any objections that that might cause for them? If there's snow, are they up in the mountains and they might not be able to get down and not be able to make it into the studio? Is there a bridge that they have to cross, cross that might have backed up or have an accident that doesn't allow them to get over in time for class? What are the things that can prevent them from getting to the studio? Date of birth. Okay. Are you old enough to do a membership on your own? Do you need a parent consent? Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife that's gonna, that need to be a part of this process for you? And going back to the address one more time, a couple other things that we can add to that is how long have you been there? If they've only been there six months, okay, well, martial arts is a good activity for them to meet new people because they don't know anybody. If they've been there 15 years, you know they're probably going to be around for a little bit more. And I always ask, do you plan on being in this area for the next 24 to 36 months? Pre-frame them and get them to understand that this is a commitment, a long-term commitment, and they need to be in the area in order to complete this membership. Have you ever done martial arts before? Simply know your audience. You know, have they done it before? Have they not done it before? When was the last time they did it and how long did they do it? Why did they stop? 
Did they stop because they moved? Did they stop because of an injury that we might need to know about? Did they stop because of school? Did they stop because they're just quitters? And that's something that we need to know and pre-frame ourselves with moving forward that this guy is a quitter. He's quit two martial arts studios already. We need to know this. We, have a, we had sorry, a student at our school that has been to nine different martial arts studios in the city. I repeat, nine different martial arts studios in the city. And I say we had a student that's been to nine because exactly that. He's been to nine. He wasn't able to commit to one studio. No matter what you did, you could teach him how to do spinning hook kicks that hit bricks that turned them into gold. And he still would move to another school because that's his mentality. He doesn't have the loyalty factor that martial arts teaches. And that was probably not taught to him at his very first martial arts school. So that set up his failure for the rest of them down the road. So it's important for us to know this type of information so that we know what we're handling and what we're, what we're managing moving forward and, and also what we're taking on. What other activities are you currently involved in? Well, very simple. Martial arts schools are not our competitors anymore. Our competitors are the, are the you know, daycares, the after-school programs, swimming, soccer. These are our competitors because these are the objections that are going to come up. No, we can't come to class. We have soccer three times a week. No, she has piano, gymnastics. He plays on a competitive hockey team six days a week. We, don't, we can't make your schedule. Now, luckily, at our studio, we are open seven days a week. We have classes as early as 6.30 in the morning until as late as 9.30 in the evening. So it's very difficult for anyone to come in our studio and say they can't make a time. So it's important to know what other activities they're involved in, not only because you need to know what will take them away from your studio, but also to understand what seasons they're going to be busy, because martial arts is not a seasonal activity. And last but not least, it's important for us to know Cross, you know, cross training. What can martial arts do to help them with their other activities that they're involved in that other activities can't? For example, if they're in soccer or gymnastics or hockey, martial arts can definitely work well with that. But at the same time, if they're in a daycare program or if they're in a, a spelling bee or if they're in, in a piano, the focus and the discipline of martial arts can help with that. Martial arts can help everybody all the way across the world. And I truly believe at one point in time, every human being will take some sort of martial art. It's just a matter of which school will they train at. Do they have any health conditions or injuries that we need to be aware of? Simple. Can they even do martial arts? And if they can't, how can you make it so they can? How can you make them feel comfortable to know that when they come to you, that you are so trained and you are so good at what you do that you can alter their training specifically for them so they don't have to do the, what, they, what the guy next to them does. I always tell people this. Martial arts is an individual activity that's done in a group atmosphere. You don't have to do what the guy next to you does, the guy in front of you does, or the girl behind you does. You just have to do what you do. But unfortunately, a lot of martial arts school instructors and school owners don't understand that, don't pay attention to that, end up hurting their students, the students get discouraged, and they leave, and they don't come back. So it's important for us to understand what kind of conditions they have and how we can help not only improve their conditions, if possible, but also just manipulate their training a little bit so that they can come in and get the same fun and get the same overwhelming feeling of greatness and accomplishment, but doing it at their own pace. And last but not least, why do you want to learn martial arts? If you don't know why they want to learn martial arts, you're in trouble. Not only are you in trouble because you don't know what you're actually selling them, but you're in trouble because you're not going to hit their buttons. They're going to get bored. They're going to lose interest. Or they're not going to get what they came to get, and they're going to leave. Now, they might go to another martial arts school, 
but do you really want to feed the mouth of the other school owners in your area? I don't. So it's important that we do this and find the seven magic questions, throw them in a waiver form, and get them all to fill it out. Get them to tell you what you need to say to sell them into a membership program. The intro. Some of you guys do intros. Most of you that I talk to actually do intros. Some of you don't, and that's okay. Instead, you guys let them go into a class, or you do some kind of private lesson. Either way, no matter what you do, keep it simple. Don't do, don't do too much. In our introductory lesson, our first one, we teach them a jab, a punch, a duck, a fighting stance, and at the end of it, we teach them their creed and send a paper home with them so they can memorize it and come back. Because if they come back to their next lesson and they've memorized the creed, I know they're serious. So find out what you can give them as homework so that when they come back, you know and you can gauge whether that person is serious or not. And that will help you in the sales process as well. When I'm, doing, when I'm teaching lessons to, you know, for kids, I always speak to the parents through the kids. All right, so now we're going to talk about respect. Do you know what respect is? Well, one way that we show respect to martial arts is we bow. So why don't you put your feet together, hands at your side, and bow like this. Oh, good job, okay? Well, yeah, you're telling the kid how to bow, and yeah, you're telling the kid about respect, but you're really talking to the parent that's sitting in the chair behind you 10 feet and letting them know that you're working on things like discipline, respect, focus. Find those power words, those keywords that you can use in those lessons. They're not blatantly obvious that you're trying to sell them on an idea, but showing them that you are actually going to work on those type of characteristic traits. Most people do not bring their kids down for self-defense anymore. Most people do not bring their kids down for competition anymore. Most people are bringing their kids down to the school because their kid has low confidence or low self-esteem. They're not focusing. They're not playing well with others. These are the type of things that people are coming into the school for. Yes, of course, it's great that they learn self-defense. But even when a kid defends himself, he's getting in trouble now on the playground. So instead, teach him how to walk away from it and teach him how to have the confidence to not even get involved in it. And this is all that we're doing. You all know it. This is all stuff that you guys are doing on a daily basis. But now try and find those key words and those power words that you can use in those intro lessons, in those meetings, in those private lessons, or in those class atmospheres that you can use to speak to the parents that are sitting on the side watching. So they can say, you know what, sure, I'll pay $150, I'll pay $200, I'll pay $250 a month. The average tuition in our school is $189 a month. $189 per month. That's the average. We have lessons that go all the way up to $400 a month. And why do people pay that? They pay it because they see the value in having their child be a part of your school. Follow the waiver. When you're in that intro lesson, have the waiver with you at the very beginning and go over every single one of those magic questions and reiterate them with that person before you step up and even teach them the very first technique. Make them feel like they can do it. Give them that confidence from the jump, right from the beginning. The high kick of the snake drill may seem cheesy, but they work. And if you don't know about the high kick or the snake drill, you need to get on this. Okay? You're standing there as an instructor, and you say, okay, now how high do you think you can kick? You know, keep your legs straight. Just swing it up as high as you can. How high do you think you can kick? Boom. They throw that kick up there. Awesome. Put your hand out. Now, whoop, a couple inches up. You think you can hit this one? Bam. Awesome. Good job. Whoop. A couple more inches. Do you think you can hit this one? Wham. Bam. Good job. Whoop. A couple more inches. Do you think you can hit this one? Wham. Now, did you ever think that you'd be able to kick this high? No. And when we first started, where did you start? Down here. That's just like martial arts. You start as a white belt. And we want to help you get all the way up to black belt. Now, do you think right now that you can be a black belt? No, probably not, because it's so far ahead and it's, it's so crazy, the things that people are doing for black belt. But we take you step by step, one level at a time. 
and we guide you through that process until you finally get to a point where you wake up and you're like, damn, I'm testing for black belt tomorrow. Or in my case, damn, I'm testing for second degree black belt tomorrow. I mean, that's crazy. So, you know, follow them through that and guide them and give them that confidence and teach them about goal setting right from the beginning. Set them up for their own success in your martial arts. And the snake drill is simple. Take a little skipping rope and get the kid, you know, you swing it around on the floor and you get the kid to jump over it. You ask him, how many times do you think you can jump over this rope? They'll probably say like five, ten. Do you think you can do fifty? A hundred? A thousand? And they're like, no. But then you go a little bit at a time and you get them to count. One, two, three, and you give them three chances. The third chance, they're out. You get them to jump over the rope. It's the same idea as the high kick. And if you guys want to talk a little bit more about that later, just tweet in hashtag PD Rise, and we can definitely talk about that at a late, at a later date. The follow up, system, system, system. Leads will fall through the cracks. It will happen. Even with the system, sometimes they fall through the cracks just because we're not following the system properly. But if there's no attention, leads will go somewhere else. It doesn't matter if they came to you and said, I'm interested in your school because my friend trains there. If you neglect them, they will eventually go somewhere else. So you need to have a system where you can follow up with these new leads and get them into the door. If they come for an intro, you still need to follow up with them and get them to sign up if they don't sign up on the spot. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of system you have. Well, actually, it kind of does. You know, I use Perfect Mind, and we use Perfect Mind at Champions, and it's a phenomenal system because there's email automations, and there's reminders, and there's, a, there's, there's different sections where staff can put different notes. So if you're not there, they can update you on what's going on. But just have a system. Find a system that works best for you and your studio and implement it and follow it. If you don't have a system, you will not remember to follow up. Post-it notes don't work. Pieces of paper don't work. Writing on your forehand or on your backhand does not work. There's plenty of times where I've written down on a post-it note, lost it, gone to do laundry, and found it in my back pocket. Okay? There's probably a bunch of you who have done that, and um, I feel your pain. Okay? Get a system. Implement it and follow it. And make sure everybody in your studio follows it as well. If you do not know when a sale is first made, you will fail to sell. Simple. Sensei Nick, would you agree? Sorry, Sensei, I had to unmute the mute button here. I want anybody to hear the uh, Jersey sound over here. Yes, I would 100% agree. That's uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, man. You need a system. Straight up. Just get one. I was going to ask you, Sensei. Be... I'm sorry, Sensei Brooklyn. Like you yeah, used uh, Perfect Mind, like uh, for the whole entire lead tracking system, of the, uh, from all the times you were when you were a champion, like that was something that the whole entire staff had to use to track everything. Would, would that be correct? Had to. There was no choice. Actually, when we first started, we didn't have Perfect Mind. Okay, Perfect Mind wasn't even launched yet. We actually were on the beta of Perfect Mind. Okay, so if there's any betas in here in the room right now, I feel your pain. <laughs> okay, but I was we with you. Say. I was with you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay, we were math users, but math still worked. And it, you know, it had a follow-up system, and we used that. But every staff member had to. And now, one common mistake that school owners do is they ask their staff too much for their opinions and for their help. Wouldn't you agree, Sensei? Absolutely, and uh, that, that's the best part. Now, with Perfect Mind, the reports, everything's pretty much done for all the school owners, and they could just, you know get the proper reports so that way they're not wasting time trying to figure out how to use it. Absolutely. And if you implement a system in the school, you as the school owner or you as the, the head honcho there have to put your foot down and say every single staff member in the school must use this system moving forward. Any other system you're using, close it. Don't use it. This is the new system. We all have to be on it. We all have to be on the same page. We all have to be doing the same thing, right? Yes, and say. Absolutely. All right. Execution, number two. Have a membership binder. If you don't have a membership binder that properly outlines all your membership options and your programs and your prices, 
you're making it more difficult for yourself to sell. Any restaurant, any business, any clothing store, anywhere you go to buy something, they have price tags. They have menus. They have things for you to look at. They don't just have some guy walking up and you know, spitting it off the top of their head and, and writing it down on a, on a scrap piece of paper. Okay? You need to have a membership binder. Grab a piece of paper. Go on the computer and print a nice little piece of paper out that has all your membership options. One, op one membership per page. Start with your paid in full at the top, followed by your down payment options. Finished with your monthly payments. So at our school at Champions, what we have is the very first one, for example, you know, you'd have your, your paid in full. So your achievement program, that's a two day a week program. It's one fifty six a month. So you have your paid in full at the top. This is option number one. Go for the paid in full. If that doesn't work for them and they can't afford to do the full payment at once, take the piece of paper that you have. I use a schedule that's covering up the other two options and just slide it down. Say, okay, option number two is you can pay $399 down and drop your payment from $156 to $132. Okay? It's the same amount of money over the year, but they're just paying a little bit up front to get a cheaper monthly payment. So the people that are saying, yeah, you know, um, I need my payment around this, cool. Pay a little bit up front and I get your payment around here. If, that, if they can't afford the down payment, whether it's $100 or $200 or $300 or $400 like us, slide the paper down one more time and say, our last option is you can go monthly. And this is the price. It's all in the presentation. But you need to have pieces of the paper that have all the information, your program, what's included with the program, and your three pricing options. Laminate it. Put them all in a binder. Sit down with them after you've gone over everything. Say, okay, now we're going to go over some membership options. Grab your binder, pull it out, open it to the very first page. All right, our first program is the achievement program. This will allow you to come two days a week. Now, because of your schedule with this, that, and the other, I believe this is the best way for you to start. And if down the road you find that you're really enjoying it and you're getting a lot of benefits, we can talk about upgrading you to another membership that will provide some more training for you so you can get further into it. Number one option. Okay, that doesn't work. Number two option. Okay, that doesn't work. Number three option. All right, these are your options. Now, don't be afraid to ask for the sale. And always assume that they want to sign up. They are there because they want you. If they didn't want you, they wouldn't have bothered to get out of bed and come down to your school and do the lesson. They know it's going to cost money. They know it's not free. They wouldn't have gone through traffic across town just to come check you out. They wouldn't have skipped a date with their girlfriend or their boyfriend to come and do a lesson with you, they're interested. So assume they want to sign up. And do not be afraid to ask for the sale. Wayne Gretzky said you miss 100% of the shots you don't get. Michael Jordan said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Anybody that's, anybody that's done anything says the same thing. If you don't do it, you don't get it. So don't be afraid to ask for the sale. And always, I mean always, Every time you sit down with someone, assume in your head that they're already signed up, that they want to sign up, that they're there to give you a credit card and walk home with a uniform. Everybody that's in this room right now is in here because the title said sell like a million dollar school. I'm, I'm convinced of it. It wasn't because I was doing a webinar. Okay, I have a couple fans in there, I know. I got my mom in there watching the webinar just so I could boost up the, you know, the amount of people watching, make myself feel better, give myself some confidence. But everybody's here because they want to make money. So everyone here should know the term ABC, always be closing. If you don't know that, you're not a salesman. Go out and watch it. Glenn, Larry, Glenn Ross, Boiler Room, Wall Street. These are the movies that our staff has to watch before they even start their first day. When you come down and you want to be a program director or you want to sell something at our studio, the number one thing I always say is, have you watched Glenn, Larry, Glenn Ross? Have you watched Wall Street? Have you watched Boiler Room? No? This is your homework. Go home and watch all three of them. Okay? We might not sell like Boiler Room. We might not be Wall Street brokers, but you have to have the mentality of being a salesman. 
in every single interaction a sale is made. They either sell you on a reason they cannot take martial arts or you sell them on a reason they have to take martial arts. One or the other, someone's getting sold. So just make sure that you are the one that's always making the sale. Even if that means at the end of it you pull the last straw, which is okay, let's just sign you up for our six-week program. Let's just, you know what, let's, start, let's do this. Let's start you with our two-week program, introductory, $39.99. Whatever your introductory special is, have that as your ace in your back pocket. And if they don't go for option one or option two or option three, bam, option number four. You know, I don't normally do this, but hit them with the ace. Now, some of you guys may or may not know that I have a background in dancing. I know it sounds kind of funny, right? But Believe it or not, dancing and martial arts go hand in hand. And um, I used to be a part of a dance crew. And our dance crew actually to this day is still undefeated in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, we, we, uh, we battled for, for years, uh, you know, big events and, and concerts and nightclubs and, you know, battle, you know, battle extravaganzas and you know, all these things. And our crew, there was five of us, you know, our dance name was Dot Nickel. We, we were awesome. I'm just going to put it out there, okay? But one thing we learned as dancers is never show your best moves first, okay? Never show your best moves first. Come out, be unsuspecting, give them a little teaser, give them something, and then bam, hit them with the final um, move and sometimes you know what we even won the dance battle and the dance competition without even pulling some of our best moves which allowed us to keep them in our back pocket for later because you knew that some of the people in the crowd watching that battle you were eventually going to battle down the road so find out what your best move is and keep it in your back pocket and remember don't show your best move first Last but not least, measurement. We use an in-your-face board. Now, some of you might have heard me talk about this before. Some of this, uh, for some of you, this might be brand new and, and totally foreign to you. Now, don't get overwhelmed or scared of the, the numbers in there. Those are the numbers from champions. So those are the numbers that we use. I encourage you to find your own numbers and put them in the sport. But simply put, every single person in this room, the homework I'm giving you is to leave this webinar today. And by the end of the day today, buy a whiteboard. Just go out and get one. They're not expensive, 20 bucks. Buy yourself a whiteboard. Bring it to the school. Don't put it out where the students can see it if you can, you know, if you can prevent it put it in the back where only the staff can see it. And this whiteboard or this in your face board is exactly what it's called. It's a board that is in your face. This in your face board is supposed to be an accountability measure for your staff to know exactly where they're at and what they need to do to go where they want to go. And as a school owner or a manager, you should be able to walk into school at any time of the day, walk right to the back to the in your face board and see it and know exactly where your school is at. Now what's nice about this is that everybody else can see this. So if I'm the sales guy in the school and I don't have a lot of extensions, extensions are new students, and everybody sees that, well, it's going to make me feel kind of silly. So it's going to motivate me to go and put num numbers up. I never wanted people to see a goose egg beside that. I never wanted people to see less than that. I average between 35 and 45, eh, well actually 35 and 40 if we're going to go on averages, 35 and 40 brand new enrollments every single month, every month. And then another 30 to 35 renewals every month. Now sometimes there was 25 renewals just based on there wasn't that many people that signed up the same time the year before, but when I was there, there was because every year there was 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 new members signing up every single month. This year, January, at our school, we signed up 52 brand new students, all on 12-month contracts, with an average tuition of $189 a month. It was a phenomenal month. It was a great way to start this new year and, this, and the first quarter. 
But part of the reason we were able to do that is because we had a board that was in our face every single day that we were able to use as an accountability measure. How many calls were made? How many lessons were booked? How many people showed up? How many people signed up? Out of the people that signed up, how much money did you collect today, this month? How many renewals? How much money did you collect from renewals? How much delinquents and how many people? Breaking down your students by A, B, C, non-active students so you know your percentages in each level. Upgrade, upgrade collected, cancellations, pro shop value. We do 2500 a week in pro shop sales. And then you have your monthly totals on the side there. So you can see exactly where you're at. Here you can see we have 13.6% non-actives out of 636 students. It's not bad, but it'd be nice to be under 10%. So what do we have to do? This gives you the guideline to know every single day what you need to be working on to get the goals you want to get. If you want to have four, five, six hundred students, two, three, four hundred students, but you don't know what you're doing on a daily basis to get there, you'll never get there. You don't get the 300 students by fluke or by chance. You don't. You only get there by hustling. And since Nick always said, hustle beats talent if talent doesn't hustle. This will help you hustle day in and day out. If you want a copy of the In Your Face board, just tweet hashtag PDRise and we'll send one to you later. So the recap for success, the three simple guidelines for accomplishment. Number one, theory. Know when the sale is made first. Number two, execution. The waiver form. Use those seven magic questions to your advantage. Handle the objections before they even come up. So when you sit down to talk about membership, it's as simple as, I'm the professional, this is what I recommend. Do you agree with me? Awesome. What's your credit card number? Number three, measurement. Have the whiteboard in front of you every day that you can check and get the information you need to know to move from today, tomorrow, and have a positive growth. Anybody that comes to my Program Director 2 training course webinar and has not purchased a whiteboard will be kindly asked to leave. And I don't mean to be rude or obnoxious. But simply put, if you want to be successful in your school and you hear of a tool that can help you do that and you don't even take $20 out of your pocket to go buy a whiteboard and put it up so that you know what you need to work on, you don't want to be successful in it. You don't want to be successful as bad as you want to breathe. If you haven't watched that video, watch it. It's powerful. So I'm encouraging everybody and I'm suggesting to everybody today, before the day is over, have a whiteboard and put your information up there. If you need help with it, I am definitely willing to help you. One last time, the Toronto Training Day is May 26, 2012, coming up in about two weeks here um, in Toronto at the Hampton Inn by the Toronto Airport, nice and close. Uh, we'll be going over lead generation, Lee nurturing, social media, student engagement, email marketing, student retention. There will be software training there as well. If any of you guys have brought a guy out from Ch Champions Way or Perfect Mind to do software training at the school, you know it's about 2500 bucks. So uh, this is a great opportunity to get trained on the software and the powerful Perfect Mind for your studio and go back with some, uh, some great ideas. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to announce who the winner is for the training day ticket. So let's, uh, let's check this out. Hope you guys enjoyed the webinar. I got a couple of takeaways that you can bring home back to the studio and put them to play. Let's check this out. All right, so I am not sure who Matt McMahon is, but Matt McMahon, congratulations. You just got a ticket to the Toronto Training Day to this month, May 26th. Hopefully we can see you there and uh, <clears throat> we can have a little drink together, have some fun. Um, 
discuss some business opportunities for you to take back to your school and implement the Perfect Mind system into and, and get it going. So that's that. Now let's go over one more time here. Last but not least, here's my contact information. <clears throat> Should you guys have any questions, uh, you just want to connect with me socially, interact with me online, whatever, my Facebook page is here. Just simply search uh, facebook.com forward slash Sensei Brooklyn. You can tweet me at twitter.com, <clears throat> excuse me, twitter.com slash Sensei Brooklyn. Call me at 877-774-5425, extension 6319. Uh, email me at brooklyn at championsway.com. As you can see, I'm pretty available for you guys. So if you have any questions, uh, you want to go over anything from the webinar, uh, you want a copy of the program director kit, uh, you didn't quite get um, all the information that you needed out of this, and you, you need another little recap, or maybe you have some questions about the Perfect Mind software. Uh, maybe you're not a client yet. You want to talk about becoming a client. You know, I am the guy that you can call and have a great conversation with, and we can talk about all the different things that you're trying to accomplish this year and see about working together, uh, building a long-term business relationship that's built off of martial arts principles, and at the end of the day, do what matters most, make money. Coming soon, senseybrooklyn.com, so check out for that as well. Tweet away with your questions or your comments, and we can definitely go off on that. Again, it's hashtag PDRise. And if you want to use a Google Doc uh, for the, um, for the in-your-face board, definitely just tweet us or email us or, or whatnot, and we'll send that over to you as well so you can, um, so you can get that over to the studio and, uh, and use it. It's a very powerful tool. Sam Marcellini. Sensei Brooklyn. Thank you so much, Sensei. I just wanted to throw a couple key points in here. I was taking cool. notes and a lot of great information coming through here, Sensei. Um, awesome. First question is, um, how do you just decide whether or not someone has what it takes to be a program director when they, for schools that are looking to hire somebody? Like, you know, what are the traits you're looking for? I know you mentioned a lot about sales and so forth, but if you're looking to promote someone from within to become a program director, what are some traits that you would look for for that person to become a program director? Absolutely. Great question. You know, do I think anybody can be a program director? No, I don't. And it's just the sad truth. Uh, a couple things, definitely. You know, sales is definitely one of them, um, a very big part of it. Uh, but if you're a good trainer and you're a good salesman yourself, you can teach them the tricks to being a better salesperson. Um, one of the things I look for is someone that's outgoing. You definitely have to have an outgoing personality. You can't be in your shell. If you're an in your shell type of person, any role in a martial arts studio probably is not going to really work for you too much. But you need to be someone that has an infectious personality, something that no matter what happens on the first lesson or the first call, that person just liked the interaction they had with you, and they want to come back and see you. At, at our school right now, we have a guy named Stu. Okay? Stu has an infectious personality. Sometimes I joke around and say he's like a, a squirrel on crack because he's just like all over the place, just like smiling and, and he's moving and he's, he's just got this unbelievable personality. The other day, I kid you not, the kid sang a song to a girl in the office to get the sale. They were going and she was humming and hawing and mm, I don't know and it sounds good but this, that and the other and he was like, come on, come on and he you know, quickly just kind of touched her on the shoulder very gently and said, of course this is something you want to do. And she said, you know what, I'll make a deal with you, sing me a song and I'll sign up today. <laughs> he looked at her, looked at me, he said, all right, what kind of song you want to hear? <laughs> I didn't even remember what the song was because I was so taken back by the fact that the dude got up out of his chair and serenaded this girl right there on the spot to get the sale. So you need to be able to have the, the personality to take chances. You have to have that, that personality to, to step out of your comfort zone. I personally think a program director shouldn't have a comfort zone. But you should be able to step out of that comfort zone to do different things to bring people in and, 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 and get them to sign up. Another thing is you need to be able to read body language. If you read body language, that will help you in your sales so much. But if you, don't be, if you can't read body language, just even the simple body language, you know, selling memberships is going to be very difficult as well. Um, so reading body language, infectious personality. And 
I'm sorry, and this is going to sound really shallow, but someone that's good looking. Okay? And I'm not talking model good looking, Angelina Jolie good looking, but just someone that's presentable, someone that is clean cut, someone that, that dresses nice, that takes care of themselves, someone that has pride in themselves and their appearance. That's very important as well because you know that every single day they're going to come to work with an ironed and cleaned uniform. They're going to wear their belt just right so that each side matches the other side. One's not lopsided. That they're going to come in and their beard is, even if they have a beard, it's trimmed. It's nice. It's clean. It's kept. They don't come in with bedhead. Okay? Some girls might like the bedhead look, but in a martial arts school, you have to be uniformed. So you need to have a, a, a clean look to yourself. You need to have um, confidence in yourself. If you don't have confidence, being a program director is going to be very hard as well. And another thing that I look for in a program director is, is um, you know, aside from confidence, is being able to handle objections and rejections. If you're the type of guy that constantly gets down on yourself, like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, every single time someone says no, you're in the wrong business. Because even at our school, our conversion rate's about 85%. So 15% of the time, we're still getting no's. And if you're the type of person that's going to allow that to affect the rest of your day, you're a pylon in my books. Because as soon as you get one no on the phone or one no in person, the rest of your day is shot. So you definitely need to have somebody that can handle objections but also handle rejections. Thanks so much, Sensei. Another question coming in. That, that was a really good explanation of exactly, and I couldn't agree with you more, uh, when it comes to hiring a program director. Now, next question, is the in-your-face board in the library? The in-your-face board is in the library. It's underneath, um, actually, it's, if you go into the library and you go to the Learning Center, inside the Learning Center, you'll see a box of a studio chair that says Program Director, and you click on that. That's the Program Director kit. So all the library subscri subscribers can go into the library, go to Learning Center, hit Program Director Kit, and the In Your Face board will be there, as well as the seven magic questions. Thank you, Sensei. Another question, when it comes to Program Director paying a Program Director, do you think commission is a good strategy? Commission is definitely a good strategy, absolutely. Because if you don't give them commission, they don't really have that burning desire to do more. You always want someone that goes above and beyond. You don't want to hire for mediocrity. You don't want to say, okay, here's your, here's your salary, and regardless of whether you bring five students in or 50 students in in a month, this is how much you're going to get paid. Right? Give them the incentive to, to go out and maybe do their own marketing. Maybe go on their own Facebook page and their own Twitter and their own Google+. Or when they're out getting a coffee or buying a new pair of shoes, to be that guy that says, listen, you would be awesome in martial arts. Why don't you come down and try a free class on me? You know, you have to have some sort of commission structure that will motivate these guys to go out and do more. Otherwise, your school will not grow. One person that is phenomenal at making commission structures is John Malik. That guy right there has it down to a science on how to do it based off of um, based off of results and you know off of uh, you know what they can bring in. So you definitely want to find some happy median where it's okay. As a program director, you will work this many hours, no matter what. So this is your base. But if you do this and this and this for every cell, you'll get this percentage. And I always like milestone ones as well. So milestone percentages or bonuses that you can give the program director that say it's okay. If you get 20 students to enroll in a month, we'll give you an extra boom. If you can get 50 people to enroll in a month, you can get an extra boom. That way, at the end of the month, there's five days left in the month, and that's that program director is sitting at 17 or 15, 16, 17 sales for the month. And he's looking at it going, okay, it's Tuesday. The last day of the month is a Saturday. I only work till Friday. Okay, well, maybe he comes in on Saturday on his own accord because he wants to do a couple extra lessons because he wants to hit that bonus, right? Or maybe he just wants to put his butt in gear 
for the last couple of days and really, really, really work hard to bring in those extra couple sales so that uh, he can hit that milestone bonus. So definitely you want to try and find some way above and beyond just a flat uh, salary to encourage these guys and motivate these guys to go out and do more. Oh, excellent, Sensei. Another great answer. Uh, okay, and we have time for one more question, Sensei. What percentage of prospective new students don't sign up? And that's from, I believe, Matt McDaniel from AKK or Karate. Shout out to Matt McDaniel there, sir. Shout out to Matt McDaniel, my man. Uh, percentage of prospects, uh, prospective new students that don't sign up? You know, that's, that's tough uh, to give you a percentage on that because everybody's different, you know. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, some people will call me up and say, hey, Sensei Brooklyn, um, I need help with marketing. So, okay, well, how many, how many leads you get? Five a month. Okay, yeah, you need help with your marketing. How many leads you get? 15, 20 a month. Okay, well, that's not really stellar, but that's actually pretty good. But how many are you signing up? Three, four. Okay, you don't need help with your marketing. You need help with your sales, right? So percentage of prospective new si students that don't sign up, I like to be at 80, 85% of students that do sign up. So, you know, 15% don't sign up. I like that. So I like to try and get everybody to a point where if they do 10 lessons, eight and a half of them are going to sign up. Okay, so it's just a matter of, again, the system that you have implemented and um, and how you actually follow that system and then constantly teaching yourself new ways to sell, listening to podcasts, reading books, talking to the other sales guys, okay, doing internet searches and, and, and looking through different um, articles online. If you're not constantly educating yourself on sales, you will not get better at sales. It's just simple like that. Okay? Um, you have to continuously educate yourself on sales and then tie your education and what you're learning in with a system that you follow religiously. You have to have a system that as soon as you come into the school, you walk to the system and you see what you have to do for that day. If there's a slow part in the day and you don't know what to do, go to the system and see if there's someone you can call. Go to the system and see if there's someone that came. Pull up a list of all the people that came in for intros but didn't sign up in the last 30 days. Call them and try and get them back in. Call all the people that came to your website or came to Facebook and showed interest that didn't come in for an initial lesson. Call them and try and get them in for a lesson, right? So call all the people that came in and signed up for a six-week program but didn't sign up for a one-year program. Try and get them back in, okay? So there's always something that you can be doing and someone that you can be calling, but you need a system, right? So everybody's different. I personally think that, um, that you should have it at around 85% personally if you want to be really successful because that keeps your numbers high and and you know allows you to focus more on bringing in lots of students or sorry leads because if you bring in the more leads you bring in if you're sitting at 80 85 percent conversion rate you're making money simply straight up you're making money thank you much uh, thank you so much sensei and we're actually out of time for questions but uh, if we can go back one slide sensei if anybody has any additional questions if we could put up your contact information okay Absolutely. guys that'd be great and then also, guys, if anyone in the webinar is not currently using Perfect Mind, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can either contact Sensei Brooklyn or you can contact 877-774-5425, extension 1, that is our sales department. Uh, and then here's Sensei Brooklyn's information here. Any other questions if you have about the program director uh, webinar? And part 2 will be coming up next month. Sensei Brooklyn will be actually be with us in Toronto next week, so we're excited about that. And Sensei Brooklyn, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and providing this great content for all of our clients. And I'm sure the recording will be coming out probably uh, mid next week. So if anyone missed it or if you came in late, we will be sending out the recording for that. So everyone, make sure you can show that to your staff members as well. You definitely want to let them listen to Sensei Brooklyn with his experience and his knowledge. So on behalf of Champions Way, Sensei Brooklyn, I'd like to, again, thank you so much for your time. If there's anything else you'd like to say to the clients, uh, on behalf of Champions Way, I want to pass over to you, Sensei. Cool. Thank you so much, uh, Sensei Nick. Man, you're awesome. I love you. I love working with you. And honestly, I learn a lot from this man as well. You know, a lot of the stuff that I learned uh, is coming from Sensei Nick. He's a phenomenal martial artist and phenomenal businessman himself and just a phenomenal human being. So if you ever get an opportunity to communicate with him or connect with him or Facebook or whatever, definitely do that. But I want to thank every single one of you for taking time out of your day. Okay, because time Thank is you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate the words. 
Time is one of our most important commodities because it's one of the only things that we can never get back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So I want to thank every single one of you guys for taking the time out of your day to, to sit in front of a computer screen on what might be a sunny day out where you're at or a rainy day out where you're at and listen to what I have to say. hope you guys took a couple of takeaways that you can implement to your school and get positive results with. If you have any questions, by all means, hit me up socially, email, call me, whatever. I'm looking forward to talking to every single one of you. I'm looking forward to seeing every single one of you that are coming to the Toronto Training Day. And I just want you guys to have a blessed day. And, um, you know, go out and kill it, man. You'll make this month different from last month and next month different from this month. Go out and make that money and get those goals. Buy that car you want. Buy your wife that purse she wants. You know, put that food on the table you want. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, just go out and do it. Make no excuses about it and do it.